Hello guys, I'm Liviu and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to do a mod for TBS Tango 2, modifying it from 250 milliwatts output power to 500 and hopefully we don't mess it up. I don't have that much time to do mods on uh, products, but I am struggling to find time to make at least repair videos or tutorials about stuff. Also, if you would like to support me, please press that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified as soon as I post a video. For this mod, we will need to completely disassemble the Tango 2 remote because everything on this remote gets somehow connected to the motherboard, so we will need to disassemble everything on this remote. It's not an easy job. I would not recommend this for beginners that don't have too much experience with electronics. Some uh, little thoughts about uh, TBS Tango 2. Unfortunately, the screen is not showing on my camera for some reason, but uh, it's an OLED high resolution display, which works like a charm. It's doing what it is supposed to do. Just uh, configure some stuff on the remote. So yeah. What I really like about TBS Tango 2 is that it has somehow full size sticks and that you can also pinch or at least I am pinching on the left and also thumb. So you can go full pinch or the hybrid pinch or just thumbing. It's a very ergonomic design that you can get used to and it is very comfortable to hold in hand. It has uh, some basic switches, three position switches here, two position pressing switches here and some uh, momentary switches down there. Other than that, it has an integrated antenna, which um, is very good because you can flip it vertically and also you can use it like a stand. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Great things happen inside. And because this is a mod video, I will just switch the remote off and I will disassemble it to get to the PCB and see what we are faced with. But before I will go on and disassemble the Tango 2, a bit of a warning, if you open up and touch anything on the electronics side of Tango 2, your warranty will be void. Not to mention that if you are modding it to 500 milliwatts in some countries, it may not be legal. So uh, be careful about that. Anyway, let's uh, start up. We have to remove these rubber silicone pads here. They have some clips. And they come up like this. Put those aside. And the second one is out. And now we are faced with one, two, three, four, five, six screws. One of my screws is missing because uh, I managed to break it. By the way, guys, take a coffee, if not a beer, because uh, this video will be long. A very good idea when you work on uh, any electronic device with uh, screws and stuff, just hold a plastic container where you can um, place all the things inside. Now we are going to open up the Tango 2. I want to be sure I will not lose the screws. So I'm just making sure the screws are out and put them in my plastic container. Now moving on to the Tango. The first thing I'm gonna do is just uh, take out the battery cell and disconnect it from the motherboard. Place the battery in a safe place. Right here on the left we have the speaker connection. 
over here we have the connection for the display take it out we just put something underneath by the way this connector is almost the same like the ones in gopros so yep as you will see we have one screw here take it out place it out into our plastic bin same with this one now i have one on the top right here and i have another one on the top left and i don't know if you will believe me or not but now we will just raise the motherboard up like that you will see here a silicon band that's used to keep the ufl connection in place there not to get disconnected like that and now we can separate everything next we are going to disconnect the gimbals from the motherboard and to do that we will just unscrew these screws we have four screws to take out before the gimbal is completely out of the board and what i like about uh, the tbs design i don't know if others did the same or not but the actual hole sensors are not on the gimbals but rather on the pcb itself and we just took it out these are the gimbals put them aside on the board itself you can see the actual hole sensor here disconnect the other gimbal from the motherboard and take out this gimbal also put that aside also Another thing we need to do is just take out the plastic things. Yeah, I don't know how to, to take these ones out. They appear to, to have some clip here that you can uh, take out, but I don't want to ruin them. I will just be careful not to throw heat here or maybe just protect uh, the whole thing. The rotary encoder, which is quite far from here, I don't think I will mess that up. On the other side, I have this battery strap thing that is just beneath the RF area that we will heat up. So I will um, take care of that pad. I don't know what this sticker is, but it's just on the other side of where I will work. And I don't want to mess this up by hit. What can I say? A pretty beautiful design. Everything is included. Be careful with the PCB itself. We don't want to mess it up. Okay, so um, before I do anything, I just want to measure the actual output power of uh, TBS Tango 2 before the mod and after the mod. I just uh, plugged in the LiPo. I've connected a jumper cable and that's connected to my spectrum analyzer. I will power the remote like this. It started transmitting. I will just 
wait a bit for all the channel where Crossfire is operating to max out and see the channel power. I see 31.9 dB and because I connected my TBS Tango to the spectrum analyzer through a 8 dB attenuator, that means 31.9 minus 8, 23.9 dB. And if you look closely here, 23.9 is almost 250 milliwatts. So that's right on the money. I will turn off my spectrum analyzer right now. Shut off the remote. Taking out the LiPo pack. Disconnect the display and button. I will disconnect the UFL right now. Okay guys, this is the metal can that's covering the whole RF section. As you can see, here we have the RF trace coming from under the can to the UFL and from here goes to the antenna. And for us to get access to all the RF goodness inside, we will need to take out the metal can. And for that I will use my iron and suck up some of this uh, solder from here. And I have some solder also here. Just and if it doesn't work, only by sucking up the solder, you just go in and pry it while the solder is melted. Like this. And we also have one over there. I like to clean the remains now to not stress out later. Okay guys, so I managed to secure my PCB in place. I want to talk about what we are going to do here to realize this uh, 500 milliwatts mod. If some of you watched my uh, micro takes 500 milliwatts mod, they knew that I had to get rid of this um, attenuator here comprised of these um, three resistors. And if I'm not mistaken, right then those were attenuating around 9 dB or something. I just can't remember. With that attenuator in place and software mod, the micro TX couldn't reach exactly 250. But now we realize that this Tango 2 version of the micro TX transmitter reaches 250 without a problem. So that means that they modified this attenuator. If I'm not mistaken, we had 70 ohms or something like that. But let me measure these resistors here. So we have this one. So this one is 116 ohms. The middle one is 22.9 and this one obviously is the same 116 from what i remember those were 70 40 70 so they um, bring down the attenuation a bit so that's a good thing uh, it means that we will not need to mess with this we also have this resistor here and this one is around 2k if i remember correctly it's actually 1.2 kilo ohms. Keep that in mind because we are going to talk about this BIOS resistor further in the video. This is the BGA7124, which is the 250 milliwatts RF amplifier IC. There is the 7127, which is 500 milliwatts. And there is another one which has one watt. 
but that has a completely different uh, matching network on the output so it's a little bit uh, complicated to use that one so we draw the line we managed to find out that there are two identically designed kind of RF ICs but there still is a difference in the power section we have different values of capacitors and also on the 500 milliwatts they recommend to use here a series resistor of 1.8 ohms on the 250 they recommend that resistor to be 0 ohms TBS went and used the version with no resistor here because 0 ohms means uh, a dead short so uh, between this cap here and these two caps here in the 500 milliwatts we should have here a resistor in series and that's uh, messing up our design a bit first thing i am going to do is take out the rfic hopefully without ripping the two outer pads here because uh, it happened to me on the micro tx mod those outer pads are not connected to anything so if they do break it's not the end of the world i have here some um, lead free flux i will be using because uh, most definitely they used lead free in the production of this one just after i take the ic out i will also take these caps out but before doing anything i like to be safe because this board is pretty big and has a lot of other things on it i will just try and protect as much as i can from the other things on the board you can use uh, captain tape i just have some copper tape it will do the job without any issues this is just to protect a bit the other parts that are close as i said i'm trying not to kill anything else on the board especially that uh, i have some connectors that are still on the board and they have plastics on them so i don't want to kill those i try to preheat the pcb a little by uh, heating up the pcb from a distance and moving closer and closer We took out the IC and now while the board is still hot I will uh, try and uh, remove the cap from here put this big cap in a safe place and remove the other two from here also I don't know if you noticed or not but I uh, took out also the inductor which was here that's not an issue because uh, I was going to desolder that also be very sure that you placed the parts you took off in a safe place because uh, we are going to use some of them 
now i will rearrange the board so that i can uh, clean up all the pads from there taking the soldering iron and placing fresh solder on all these pads here be careful that when you desolder the RF amp be careful because uh, there is a big ground plane underneath the IC which needs to get to temperature before you raise up the IC from there now I'm just cleaning the pads to remove any lead free solder from there don't press too much not to mess out the the solder mask which is the green thing on uh, the PCB now we are going to take an ear stick with the uh, alcohol and rub the place where we worked so that we can uh, make it shiny again and in the same time see how things are going here okay coming back i've talked for like five minutes without recording i'm very sorry but uh, luckily i managed to find out uh, sooner than later we cleaned the pads for um, lead free solder and i already talked it but uh, i wasn't recording i took an um, off the shelf exacto knife and i used it to break the connection between this pad and this pad here it was a connection because we had the 3.3 volts coming from here an inductor to here as you can see we have the trace going from this pad to this pad and from this pad goes to this pin and we also had one cap from here to here and we had a trace going to this pad and this pad and after that goes to that pad passes through the inductor and arrives here we need to cut this trace because we need to insert here a 1.8 ohm resistor which is recommended for the 500 milliwatts amplifier reference design and also i took out these two caps from here because they were different values on the 250 milliwatts so uh, i need to place here Two caps one is uh, 10 nanofarads and the other one is 12 picofarads but because i need to insert here also a resistor which didn't have place here on the previous design we need to be a little bit creative and as you can see all this section here is ground even this pad here and also this pad of the cap this line for example is a ground also this one here is a ground you can see we have a shirt these two here are ground and this one also a ground so to make room for that uh, extra resistor we need to place here i will uh, be a little bit creative and instead of uh, placing these two caps one uh, next to each other i will place one from this pad to this pad and the other one from this pad to this pad instead of two parallel to each other and that way i'm hoping to create room for that uh, extra resistor we need to place there the first cap i want to place is a uh, 12 picofarads which is usually in here to filter out uh, rf that can uh, seep back to the power supply it's called the uh, decoupling and it's used mainly for the high frequencies and the other cap, which is 10 nanofarads, is used to filter out DC elements. I will place on this cap here some uh, non lead free solder. And to be able to work more easily, I will just rotate the board like this. I will take my cap, place it 
very close to this one hit this section it looks to be okay now let's uh, find the other cap which is uh, 10 nanofarads I managed to tack this side of the cap and now we need to tack the middle one hopefully now let's see if we connected it the right way so we have a connection in the middle we don't have any connection to ground which is good and what we are left with now is place the 1.8 ohm resistor there rotate your board now we need to take the cap we took out initially from here i will just be sure i soldered here first and now we can take the cap okay I managed to solder all the new components there the only component left will be this inductor which was originally here going to 3.3 volt I will place it like this one leg on the pad and I will connect one wire to the other side going to a 5 volt supply on the board itself but this after we will place the PS the resistance how people say it and that's the new IC needed the BGA7127 okay I placed a little bit of uh, solder on the parts pads or pins and now I will place some on the PCB just to be sure that I can get a good connection out of it and now is the tricky part starting my hot air gun maybe too much flux I will just take some away place our part there the mark that represents pin 1 should be here towards the output and we apply heat preheating the PCB We should see it snap in place alone like that move it a bit just wipe off this excess flux from here now while the board is still hot because it's easier and clean 
things a bit. Now we should take out all this craziness because we finished with the hot air and we need to clean what's underneath. Because some flux may have uh, get inside. The only other thing left to do is place the inductor we talked about here. And now instead of uh, connecting this inductor from here to here to receive 3.3 volts, which is present still here, we will connect the wire on this inductor and we will have 5 volt going here and after that flow to the system. For the initial tests, I will use an external 5 volt just to see how much current the system draws, the RF amplifier I mean. And if everything is in specs, let's say it like this, we can go um, and connect it to the internal 5 volt from the transmitter itself. I suppose we can route it through here, like this. I will just take the metal can and measure a bit. It will be perfect here, but we need to cut a little piece from the metal can to be able to squeeze that wire through. Exactly in the corner, a little hole there, and I will just fit it to see if everything lines up and everything looks to be in order. But I will not put the case yet because I want to measure the output power first that everything is working correctly and if we cannot reach 500 milliwatts because of this uh, attenuator here I am afraid I will have to modify it. I am not sure I would need to and um, also this resistor here in the data sheet they say should be around 0.9 kilo ohms and right now I have 1.2 kilo ohms. So I just want to see how much current the RF amplifier draws right now and later see what we can um, manage to do. We'll need to install the battery. I will power the RF amplifier at first with lower voltage. So let's power the transmitter if I can manage to press the button. Powering it from 3 volts, I have 150 milliampers current draw and I am putting out from the RF amplifier around 30. Point 4 dB. That means a tiny bit below 250 milliwatts, which is not bad. Let's raise the voltage a bit. Now I only have 31.87. Very, very close to what the original had. It doesn't heat up. So let's go up to 5 volt. Okay, so right now we only increased the power by 1 dB. So we are reading right now 32.9 and we had in the beginning 31.91. So that means that minus 8 dB from my attenuator. Oh yeah, I'm afraid I will have to take out the attenuator and place a little bit bigger resistor on the bias circuit shutting everything down I will just use my iron and now just taking out these resistors
we have another one here and one more put them aside who knows when you want to make it back the way it was Take an ear stick and we need to bridge this section with this section. You have two options for that. Either you bridge it with solder or you use a zero ohm resistor and that's what i'm going to do I'm going to change my tip again because i use the bigger one to desolder and right now i will use the smaller one to solder the the resistor here i will just lightly tap one pad i will place the resistor here The resistor seems to be lined pretty good and now I will solder the other half clean And now our signal is no longer attenuated by this attenuator, but rather goes straight to the RF amplifier. I'm not that um, scared of uh, this amplifier um, receiving too much power because uh, it can handle up to 25 dB of uh, input power, so I guess I'm safe. But still, I would love to find a better value here to have the um, current stabilized and don't go too far with it okay powering the remote now let's see our result we should see around 500 milliwatts right now let's see how the spectrum analyzer maxes the channel and we can finally find out if we manage to do it so we definitely are in the ballpark right now because we have 34.3 from 31.9 minus my adb attenuation that's 26.34 that's 430 milliwatts not quite there i forgot to press record again uh, what i did was just take out the 1.5 resistor for the bias and um put back uh, the 1.2k and see if we can reach the 500 milliwatts and also monitor the current consumption of the RF amplifier. What you can see right now is just um, the RF power passing through the RF amplifier with it not powered. Now let's power on the RF amplifier. And see if we manage to reach 500. I suspect we did well we are very close to 500 we have 34.7 and it will rise a bit more so I would say we are 3 dB over what we had when we started we had around 31.89 so after many tries I decided that I will use the 1.2K resistor that was initially on the board and that's because the power output increase was uh, almost zero 
and because we found out that everything works as expected I will just solder the can we have one more tack to do here and one more here I will clean the flux remains and now let's test if the 5 volt that is present on the remote board is capable of powering our RF amplifier this is just for testing I just connected there this is uh, L11 and this is the output from this uh, step up 5 volt regulator before I will put everything back together I want to make a short recap of uh, the changes we did on the RF amplifier section to reach up to 500 milliwatts so we changed the rf amplifier from the initial bga7124 with this bga7127 which is the 500 milliwatts i went through many icq resistors so i settled on uh, 1.2k on the power section we replaced these two caps here, which were 100 nanofarads and around 68 picofarads. And we changed them to the values recommended in the manual. That's uh, 10 nanofarad and 12 picofarad. We added this 1.8 ohms resistor, which was not present on the initial uh, schematic. And we disconnected this inductor, which was going to 3.3 volt and um, we connected it through a wire to L11 on the PCB itself. You can find L11 just on the other side of the SD card slot. On the input section, we disconnected these two resistors, which uh, were part of an uh, attenuator here. But uh, I eliminated this um, attenuator because uh, with it in place, I could not reach 500 milliwatts, so I just eliminated these two resistors and replaced the one here with 0 ohms. That's effectively a short. You can use here a small wire bridge or a 0 ohm resistor. It's your choice. After I closed the RF amplifier with the can, I made some measurements final measurements I managed to do if you set the remote on 25 milliwatts you get around 28 to 30 milliwatts if you set it up on 100 milliwatts you will get around 170 to 190 milliwatts and if you set it on 250 milliwatts it will go up to 500 480 500 milliwatts so um, we achieved the 500 uh, goal at least uh, i managed to to get uh, 3db over what the remote was initially outputting so i'm pretty happy with my uh, results now let's get back and close the remote i will disconnect my wire from the l11 for now because i want to find a way to root the wire more evenly let's see if we can find the original position of the gimbals three screws are down I have one more here by the way uh, after you take out 
the gimbals and you place them back in you will have to go and recalibrate your um, sticks afterwards the gimbals snap inside these holes Let's see how we can root this cable in such a way that we don't interfere with uh, the movement of the gimbal. I guess this would be the best choice. So I will need to cut a bit. Strip as little as I can. Thin the wire. For everything to be perfect, I will use some uh, sticky tape to hold the cable down. You can use whatever method of securing the cable on to the PCB. I just used a little bit of uh, double sided tape. Hopefully you can see it. The cable routes from the metal can to the 5 volt point we talked about earlier. Now on to the case. Fit this through here, pressing down the UFL and insert this uh, silicon rubber thing back. So that uh, our UFL doesn't go out. Pressing down the buttons. Hopefully this is the position for them. Now we will need to think a bit. So that everything goes inside as planned. There is a little bit of work. Here where the wheel sits. We have four more screws to secure the PCB to the frame. Next, we need to insert the speaker connector and the front screen button and LED connection. We have to place this uh, battery holder here. The battery should go like this. Perfect. Battery is secured. Now let's plug the battery inside. Let's see if the remote starts up. Because it should. Welcome to Tango 2. Switch warning. And voila. We have a um, working Tango 2. Now the only thing remaining is closing the case. And now to close it, we just have to insert these rubber pieces, we press down
Okay guys, so this was the 500 milliwatts mod for TBS Tango 2, a great remote that now is able to output 500 milliwatts to do some mid-range flights and also to be safe when you fly in areas with um, obstructions like bandos or uh, things like that. I personally like to be on the safe side and have more power reserve than to be at the limit. Thank you very much for putting up with me because I know I cannot express myself as good as in my uh, native uh, language. But um, thank you very much. Please again subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content and I will wait for your opinions in the comment section. This was a long video. I hope you guys watched it and till the next time. Bye.